Hello, I'm Emma. I'm a PhD student at the Unit for Social and Community Psychiatry, and I'm also a music therapist. I'm going to tell you today about my recently published paper called How Do You Know What You Want? Service User Views on Decision Aids for the Arts Therapies. The Arts Therapies is an umbrella term for drama therapy, music therapy, dance movement therapy, and art therapy. They are all provided in mental health services in the UK in both inpatient and outpatient settings. The therapists who deliver them are qualified and registered with a professional body. And for service users who engage with the arts therapies, there is a focus on addressing psychological and emotional difficulties. The art form is used to help build connections, both internally and with others. Service user preferences should be integrated into mental health care wherever possible. This is recommended by government guidelines and the new Mental Health Act cites choice and autonomy as the first of four guiding principles. In the arts therapies, there is an opportunity for service users to choose between the art forms. So it'd be helpful to understand how we can support people to do this, especially as they may not really know what the arts therapies involve. Decision aids are a method of telling people about treatments and are used in physical health care and for other mental health treatments. Decision aids for arts therapies has not been explored before, so we decided to put together three decision aids and see what service users thought of them. The research aim for this study was to explore, via focus group workshops, three different methods of presenting information about the arts therapies, which are music, art, drama and dance movement, through leaflets, videos and taster sessions. For the first decision aid, I combined leaflets from arts therapy services in the Trust. The second decision aid was a video, one video for each modality, showing service users taking part in experiential groups. The third decision aid was a taster session, which I developed in collaboration with experienced arts therapists in each modality, and participants got to try each art form for about five minutes in a guided activity and then moved around the room to the next one. I conducted five focus groups with 20 participants from community mental health services. The workshops were three hours long and participants got to use each decision aid and then discuss them. The workshops were designed with input from a service user and carers advisory group. And each workshop was also co-facilitated by someone with lived experience of mental distress. The discussions in the workshops were recorded, transcribed and analyzed using framework analysis. In the analysis, we found four themes. Firstly, the previous experiences of the arts that shaped discussions. Everyone who attended the groups had experience of using the art forms, whether that was in school or as a hobby, or they'd taken part in the arts therapies before. This informed their expectations about the arts therapies and their comments on the decision aids. The second theme was that aims of treatments are essential information. Participants wanted to know explicitly how and why the art therapies might help them. This was missing from all three decision aids and will be an important consideration for clinicians moving forward. We found that there were different expectations of the decision aids. Participants expected the leaflets to contain practical information such as times, dates and contact details. The videos were viewed as more promotional material for the arts therapies and were deemed to be more accessible than the leaflets. Taster sessions were described as quite therapeutic and gave participants a feeling of what it would be like to take part in the sessions. The decision aids offered an evolving understanding of the art forms in the workshops. We noticed that the group dynamics unfolded as the workshops went on. When discussing the leaflets, the participants did not discuss the experience or how it might feel but when watching the videos, they could start to see what it might be like for them to take part. In the taster sessions, they experienced something different to the understanding from the other decision aids. They found that using an art form to express themselves started to make sense. The main take home messages from the paper are that firstly, previous experiences and expectations of the arts should be understood by clinicians when supporting someone to make an informed choice about their treatment. Secondly, service users want to know explicit aims and goals of the arts therapies in all three decision aids. And finally, all of the decision aids were useful in different ways. 
and the timing and the decision making process and the physical location of the aids are worth considering. I've been asked some questions about the study. The first one is how can the decision aids be adapted to COVID times? My answer is that adaptation would be necessary if they were being used to help service users decide whether to participate in online groups. The experience of an online therapy group would be quite different to an in-person group, so the decision aids would need to re change to reflect this. Taster sessions are quite resource intensive when done in person, so maybe an online taster session would be easier in some ways, but doing therapy online is quite a different process, so I think these would have to be completely redesigned. Someone asked me what is my favourite decision aid, and I would say the taster sessions. I think they give the best impression of what it's like to be in an arts therapy session, especially if someone's never done it before. They're also really fun in themselves. I really enjoyed seeing the participants in the groups, trying something new, bonding with each other and having fun. Lots of participants surprised themselves with how much they enjoyed them. And I'm hoping to pursue this idea in one-off workshops in my future research. Thank you for taking the time to watch. Here is the citation and a QR code which will take you to the journal website.